with the leaders of NATO and Ukraine, Zelensky, four leaders from Indo-Pacific region is sitting on the same table discussing the same issues. That means that the world is becoming smaller and the challenges that earlier was just about, you know, what is going on in Europe and for and NATO was the instrument of the United States when we are talking about security of Europe. And now, little by little, and Vilnius summit was the best example of that, NATO is becoming a global security conference, as they say, and as instrument of us understanding the challenges are global. If, let's say Russian would come to Lithuania and Vilnius, that means that United States come in our support. We never thought of a scenario when United States have a challenge. Let's say in the Pacific region, it have a challenge in a scenario of Taiwan or some, some else scenario. That means that the NATO allies of Europe, Lithuania, uh, Britain, France, other nations, Portugal, go in the support of United States there. We never thought of a scenario of, let's say, NATO operating in the region of Indo-Pacific in a sense of military confrontation. So now we are talking, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about different dynamics of NATO. We all so you do believe that NATO should you know, pivot to the Indo-Pacific region to address the challenge posed by China? I don't think it should. I think it's necessary and is a historical necessity. It's just the way history goes, flows in a sense. It's logical way, it's logical way. And Vilnius summit was, in that sense, was of the most pivotal moves, pivotal, pivotal moves in a sense of showing where we are going to. It's a big, big signal for everybody. What about, what, what would you say to French President Macron, who is opposed yeah. to NATO's expansion or, I mean... When, yeah, when I'm listening to Mr. Macron, I always remember Lenin, who 100 years ago told one very genius phrase from his point of view. He said, capitalists will sell us the rope we want to hand them to. This is an example of Macron, is very example of what is going on and what is the problem with Europe. In a sense that uh, every nation in European Union is by himself. Everybody is praying by himself, finding the best way of dealing things and getting their, their own niche. They're looking still, a lot of them, look at China just as a market. Just as a market and they have some business who supports you in the election and you are playing games like, like Macron is playing. It's just a game. Europe have to find some, like, at least smaller de determinator that like, you know, this is U national interests of European Union and we are not changing it when we're not playing by other, uh, by other pri or price of the other security. Because what Macron is doing, he's, he's selling his stuff to China in, in a sense of other, other European country security issue, of Japan security issue and things like that. Uh, we shouldn't do that. Are you, are you advocating for NATO to eventually include all these uh, Indo-Pacific partners into NATO? I, I am absolutely sure that it will be done. We are talking about 10, 15 years. We're going to see absolutely different dynamics on what we see today. And we can talk about 100% uh, membership or in NATO. We can see... we. Are,